Thank you, Susan, and good afternoon to everyone. Thank you for the Consumer Federation of America for inviting me to speak on this very important Consumer Advocacy Week. It is so important that all of you gather today and stand up for consumers across the country. Like you, I know just how important it is to make sure that the Federal Trade Commission, the nation's national consumer watchdog agency, has the muscle it takes to police our marketplace, particularly against unfair and deceptive practices. You know, when COVID-19 hit, it didn't take long before scammers pried on consumers and basically did everything from selling fake cures and treatments to misinformation. And that's why we introduced and passed the COVID-19 Consumer Protection Act, which gave the FTC the authority it needs to get penalties for first time violations for deceptive practices related to COVID-19. We were facing such an incredible healthcare crisis and I believe that it was very important to give the FTC these new powers to get penalties for initial violations and obviously uh, continue to work with them on this important uh, issue. In addition, the American Rescue Plan in 2021 secured 30.4 million in new funding for the FTC to fight unfair and deceptive practices, including the COVID-19 scams and additional funding that allowed the FTC to hire more employees to enforce the law. But as Susan said, I really wanna to talk to you today before you take to the Hill and take to the communications you're going to have this week about the importance of getting consumers refunds in court. For over 40 years, the FTC relied on this authority. And many of you may understand and know in section 13B of the Federal Trade Commission. It allowed them to go to court and ask a judge to order refunds for consumers whose hard earned money was taken in unfair and deceptive practices. But that changed in 2021 when the Supreme Court overturned this long standing precedent in the AMG capital management case, stripping the FTC statutory authority to seek consumer refunds in court. I can't tell you how important it is for consumers who've been counting on all of us to have the ability to get their money back when they've been ripped off. We've heard these stories of senior citizens who sign up for a free trial on a website only to find out that the trial expired, their credit card is being charged every month and they can't even get a company to stop the charges. Or a worker who's struggling, who takes out a payday loan to help make ends meet and finds out too late that the lender is going to charge exorbitant interest fees throwing their consumer even into more and more debt, or a veteran enrolls at a university to further their education only to discover the school is a sham and she can't get a job with the standard education she had paid for in the tuition. Consumers are losing billions of dollars to scams every year. And according to the FTC in 2020 alone, consumers lost $5.9 billion to fraud and deceptive practices this situation is not getting better, it's getting worse. And as the nation's top consumer protection agency, the FTC should be empowered to go to court to refund for consumers these lost gains. But the Supreme Court decision stands in the way. And that is why we introduced the Consumer Protection Remedy Act of 2022, which gave the cru crucial, crucial authority back to the FTC and money back to consumers. For decades, the FTC secured these refunds and redress for consumers in obviously these cases of fraud, scam, and unfair and deceptive practices. The FTC stepped in when Office Depot, for example, tricked consumers into buying expensive and unnecessary computer repair services. Many of you may remember this case because it got a lot of a national attention, but obtained 35 million for consumers who had had harm done to them. When LifeLock advised senior citizens uh, telling them about uh, sensitive financial information would be protected, it wasn't until the FTC was able to return $31 million to the victims that we were able to really help and restore with refunds. When victims, I'm sorry, when veterans were scammed by a university lured into paying thousands of dollars for enrollment on misleading uh, graduation and postgraduate degrees, job claims that the FTC finally secured a court returning nearly 50 million to 130,000 victims. 
So I can't emphasize enough to you how important it is to have in the toolbox of the FTC important refund capabilities. Unfortunately, in the AMG decision, the FTC in this use of 13B, they were able to hold companies accountable. The FTC had obtained $50 million for consumers and for the parents after Amazon billed them uh, after they had been billed for unauthorized apps in children's games. So uh, Uber drivers receiving 20 million thanks to FTC's actions. So I can give you lots more examples, but I'm not sure you need more examples right now. The issue is that when these big companies um, engaged in unlawful and deceptive practices, to delay the availability of like, for example, lower drug prices in this particular case, the FTC could use 13B authority. And they believe that they have the right to use 13B authority under existing law. Now that the FTC, FTC finds themselves in this situation, it is very important that we restore this capability. It's very important that Congress continue to act. The bill that we passed out of committee uh, was passed on a committee vote, Democrats for the bill and our Republican colleagues against it. And that has prevented us from moving forward on the floor. So I would hope that you could go and talk to consumers about some of these cases, talk to the press about some of these cases, and certainly talk to my colleagues on the Hill about these cases. When pharma giant AbbVie delayed consumer access to lower generic drug prices in an alternative called Adrogel, the FTC filed a case against AbbVie for unlawful conduct. And although the court awarded the FTC $493 million in refunds to give back to consumers who overpaid for this brand name drug, consumers got nothing back because the court's judgment was vacated due to this previous Supreme Court decision. So please explain to my colleagues that in fighting for fair drug pricing, giving the FTC the ability to get refunds is a critical tool. And it had been on the books for a long time and it shouldn't be lost just because the courts didn't like its usage under the current drafting of the language. When we had a hearing before the Senate Commerce Committee, all of the commissioners said, you need to have refunds. That is the commissioners that had been appointed by both Democrats and Republicans agreed that we needed to fix. And many of my colleagues on the other side agreed that we needed to fix. But somehow now, as we uh, approach trying to get a real legislative solution, some have tried a watered down process, something that would take many twists and turns before the FTC could even have the important authority to help consumers. That is why we need to keep moving forward on this legislation. We need to keep moving forward on solutions that are going to protect consumers in this important area of the law. And that is why the legislation that I mentioned that passed out of the Senate committee is the one that we hope you will cha champion as we move through uh, our process here in the United States Senate and hopefully in the House of Representatives. Now, I'd like to mention just a few other things that we are working on in the same area. We certainly have fought hard on a prescription drug benefit language to help make sure that uh, the kinds of practices that the FTC should be looking into protect consumers from the kind of ripoffs we're seeing in, in drug manufacturing. We also want to give the FTC new authority as it relates to fighting for and protecting consumers on high oil prices particularly from the West point of view, in places in the Pacific Northwest, we're still paying more than $5.60 for a gallon of gas, and my consumers want to know why. This legislation gives the kind of transparency in the oil markets that are so important. And we're working very hard on trying to pass national privacy legislation that would be a very strong federal statute that would help protect consumers from the kinds of activities that are invasions of their privacy and certainly putting them at risk every day. So thank you so much for allowing me to speak to you today about the importance of the Consumer Protection Remedies Act 
and why it's so important to get this 13B authority reestablished in law. I appreciate everything that all the organizations are going to do to help us make that new law a reality again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senator Cantwell. We really appreciate your spending some time with us today, and I know you're very busy. Um, and I also know that you said you'd be willing to take a couple of questions, so let me just pose a few to you. You laid out really, really beautifully, of course, all of the FTC's work and the things that they can do and how much more they could be doing uh, and the problems and why we need to, to pass the Consumer Protection Remedies Act. But how can we collectively work to get this legislation on the Senate floor and passed by the Senate? Well, one thing is to educate our colleagues on the important uh, activities that need to go into place to protect consumers. Uh, it's something that was on the books for a long time, but I don't even think my colleagues realize that the FTC lost this capacity. I think they don't understand that it has been one year since last April and that there are millions and millions of dollars of refunds that consumers aren't getting. So I'm sorry if I went into too many details on some of those cases, but our point was to try to show people that there's real consumer harm happening now and it's uh, going backwards from where we have been for the last several decades. So I think if, if the call is just to restore the refunds, restore consumer refunds, and we just ask all our colleagues if they will fight for that and fight to bring it to the floor for a vote. Thank you, that seems like such common sense and I, I love the restore the refunds, that's a, that's a great tagline. Um, so tell us about your priorities for the rest of this Congress as chair of the Senate Commerce, Trans Science and Transportation Committee. Well, as I mentioned to you, this uh, issue of protecting consumers is in the forefront of, of our minds and we definitely feel that the FTC is the entity to do that work. Uh, we would give the FTC even more resources than they currently have. And we tried to do that in a previous uh, omnibus, uh, I mean, a previous uh, bill that was done, you know, when we were negotiating on Build Back Better. But we still have more opportunities this year and giving the FTC the resources they need to particularly police markets where we are seeing problems is a, is a very big priority. We would love to see this legislation by myself and Senator Grassley, bipartisan legislation on pharmacy benefit managers that basically makes certain practices of gaming the market, if you will, um, illegal or the ability for the FTC to look at those activities and basically uh, outlaw these practices. We think that would be very, very helpful in protecting consumers. More and more the market has gotten concentrated and we're very concerned that that concentrated market in the PBMs are literally dictating the price to everybody. I mean, everybody. I think I think now practically everybody is on the same side that, that if you're an employer, you want to know why you're paying this price. If you're a hospital, you want to know why you're paying this price. If you're a consumer, you want to know why you're paying this price. And you're paying this price because the PBMs have been able to set this price having so much control of the market. So we believe uh, that the FTC should uh, enhance its authority and be able to go after uh, PBMs. And so we will uh, look forward to further communication with people about that. That legislation has passed out of the Senate Commerce Committee and is awaiting floor action as well. And um, I mentioned the issue about the FTC authority on um, gas prices. There is so little known about the refined gasoline market. That is to say, there's so little transparency in how the price is set. It may be being set by just a few trades a day and then thereby uh, actually setting a price that's higher than normally you would see. Because the West Coast is an isolated market. That is, we get our oil mostly from Alaska and it's hard to get oil into that market from other places. We've been plagued by very high gas prices. Testimony before the committee from uh, one witness thinks that it could be as much as 50 cents a gallon being set by these kinds of practices. So we believe the FTC, which has the authority to investigate these markets, but never had the tools. Um, I was successful in two uh, uh, 
previous efforts, one after Enron and one after the derivative crisis, in giving new authority on um, deceptive practices that then gave entities, in one case, the CFTC, in another case, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, to police these markets. That is, set up structures where they could actually look at the actions, chase the bad actors, and have the actual um, information that allows them data, I should say, to look at these kind of, uh, of markets and make sure that they are transparent. Uh, in both of those authorities, they have led to billions of dollars of penalties against companies. Happy to give people or you uh, more details on that. Um, but in the CFTC case, I think they've prosecuted um, several, so up to maybe $5 billion. And you may have seen this recent case that the Department of Justice announced several months ago in which uh, oil market prices were being manipulated. So we know that it's happening. People just don't understand that there's so little transparency and there's no policeman on the beat. So they know they can uh, continue. People who do want to game the market know that they can game the market. And uh, one legislation I think uh, that's also being introduced by my colleague, Senator Cortez Masto, is basically to say at the request of some of these agencies that you know, people who participate in gaming the market and have been found guilty of that should not be able to go to a new company and get another job and do the same thing at a new company. So I think it's, I think it's time that we say these are precious, important commodities to the United States of America and having a fair price for them and having a transparent price for them really, really matters to consumers. And that's why the FTC has to have all the tools that it needs. That too came out of committee. Um, it came out on a party line vote, unfortunately, but you know we hope to get floor action on, on that. So those are the things we're working on for the end of the year. Well, thank you so much for fighting for us, we, for consumers. We so appreciate all of your work. So can you talk a little bit about the importance of grassroots organizing events like our Consumer Advocacy Week that we're gonna kick off right here? Critical, <laughs> you're critical, you're critical, critical infrastructure. You know, consumers know that something's wrong, but they don't know how to voice it. And you have become a trusted brand for where to focus your attention. So if you're out there in any of your organizations saying this is what needs to happen, it carries a lot of weight. And so uh, that's, so you basically are the organizers of this voice and uh, that you know, otherwise it just, you know, we don't hear the individual voices. Yeah. Um, so any final advice for our state and local advocates before they meet with their senators and representatives and the staff next week? Well, I definitely think we have to get more, um, you know, communication in the press about these issues. I lament very much that uh, we haven't been able to get more coverage on the loss of 13B authority and the fact that Americans are losing hundreds of millions of dollars in uh, lost refunds that really do matter to them and really do matter for policing the market. So if any of you have ideas of journalists who you think uh, will help us cover what the loss of 13B and why we need to restore it and uh, so in, and to restore it in a fashion that the FTC can use, not not one that sends the FTC on a on a hunt for you know three years before they can use the authority, but one that uses the authority in a timely fashion and stops bad practices. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much. Um, let me just say, on behalf of millions of American consumers, we thank you all, all for all that you do. We thank you for joining us today and know that we'll be working, fighting shoulder to shoulder uh, as we continue to work to get consumer protections and consumer rights. Uh, and, and when we so appreciate having you as our Senate consumer advocate. So thank you so, so, so very much.